Now for our story. For a few short moments last night, Peggy Douglas had been terribly happy. But then Bill Mead had confessed that he still intended to fight for custody of his child, Kip's child. Peggy had told him she couldn't trust herself to try to bring up the baby son of the woman who had caused her so much grief. She hadn't slept much afterwards, thinking it over, realizing the hopelessness of her love for Bill, since apparently it only led to unhappiness for her. And today, when Nicholas Dorn telephoned, asked to see her this evening, she felt a rush of warmth and gratitude toward him. Nicholas had been so wonderful all through these last months. And now, Peggy sits in the living room of the farmhouse alone, waiting for Nicholas. Good evening, Nicholas. Come in. Hello, darling. You know, it's wonderful. You haven't aged at all. Aged? What do you mean? Well, oh, it's been years since I saw you. I thought it would show. <laughs> See my gray hair? Oh, Nicholas. <laughs> it's been exactly four days. Are you sure you don't mean years? <laughs> Come on in, Nicholas. Days or years. It's chilly out here in the hall. Good enough, you Nick. He won't be back this evening anyway. He went down to his house. Oh? Sorry, I missed him. He said to tell you hello. And so did Aunt Mary and Mandy when they left for the movie. Oh, and we're all alone. Good. Mm-hmm. Oh, not that they aren't lovely people, everyone, but... <laughs> well, my little Daphne, what's been happening to you? Why do you call me Daphne? Well, I don't know. It sort of fits you. Daphne was a nymph, quite a shy little nymph. Mm-hmm. When Apollo pursued her, she ran away and turned herself into a tree. <laughs> well, nothing much has happened, Nicky. That is, I shouldn't say nothing exactly. I, I saw Jane Crummy one afternoon. We had a nice talk, and Randy's been teaching me how to tie knots the way fairies do. Well, you never can tell when something like that will come in handy. Well, it might. And Mary's making a new dress, and I've been reading an awfully interesting book about the song. Oh, that's right. Well, I... I guess that's about all. Okay. Now, tell me what's been happening to you. I didn't ask what you've been doing. Well, I don't know what you mean, Nicholas. What's the difference between what I've been doing and what's been happening? That's what I'd like you to tell me. Peggy, it's, it's no use, my darling. You might as well come out with it. We've got to get this over with. But... Come on, out with it. Tell me about last night. Last night. Well... You know, Bill came out. Yeah? And? We had an awfully nice dinner. I'm sure you did, but let's get the menu, shall we? Well, <laughs> Lefty was awfully funny. Aunt Mary must have given him a talking to, I guess. Anyway, he was so polite to Bill, it was painful. I'm sure Bill must have thought he was out of his mind. He kept passing and saying he... Jumping up to get an ice tray, off into the guy. Now, let's skip the social angle, too. Well, my goodness, you, you said you wanted to know about last night. I do. You know very well what I mean, little one. You're stalling, and you know it. I want to know, Peggy, what you and Bill decided. You can't turn yourself into a tree, darling. You're a mortal woman with a mortal woman's problems. At present, the problem is telling one man you love another. You do. Do you? Well, it, it isn't as simple as that, Nick. Why not? It should be. Do you love Bill Mead or you don't? Well, when you put it like that, I don't know what to say. Well, let's see if I can help you. Now, you just answer yes or no. Now, which is it? It's yes. I mean, no. Oh, Nick, I don't know. I think when I was in absolute torture last night, I kept telling myself that tonight I'd know where I stood. Oh, I'm sorry, Nick. Did you, did you have a dreadful evening? Yeah, it's either grim in an interesting way or interesting in a grim way. I can't decide which. What did you do? Well, I ran into an old acquaintance. The ex-Mrs. Mead, now known as Kit Calvert. Kit? Uh, she was in the circus room having a highball, and I happened in. I had some vague idea about drowning my sorrows, but I left after one drink with a very bitter taste in my mouth. Oh, that woman. However, we won't have the misery of her company much longer, I gathered. Why not? Well, so she's clearing out, going on to greener pastures. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, Wakefield doesn't offer many opportunities for her sort of expression. 
No, I guess it doesn't. Did she really say she intends to leave? Huh? As soon as possible. Oh. She'll probably be very well for herself, too. She's careful to go someplace where your status depends on how much dough you have and how you wear your clothes rather than what you are inside. Of course, the baby may be something of a handy. She's taking the baby. Are you sure? Oh, that's what she said. That's quite a point of it, too. Seems your father wants you to leave the child with him. Yes, of course. Then Calvert's always wanted a grandson. From your standpoint, though, I, I should think it'd be a good thing if she does take the baby with her. I don't know what you mean, Nick. Yes, you do, darling. I mean, yes, if the baby goes with Kit, it would solve your dilemma with Bill, wouldn't it? No, it wouldn't. Why not? Because, Nick, Bill still intends to get possession of that child, if he can. And he did decide it. That does make a difference. Yes, it does. Not that I don't agree with him. He should want his own child. It's only natural. But you can't. Well, I'm always sure I couldn't. That's why. I... Of course. I mean, you can't see yourself making a loving stepmother for Kit Calvert's son. No. I'm afraid I can't, Nick. Oh, maybe it's wrong of me, but I'm so afraid I couldn't be fair to the child. My feelings about Kit might come through somehow. Mm, very likely they would. You can't be blamed for that. Pretty tough on you, darling. Oh, I'm not complaining about anything, Nick. Only it's, it's been so long. Well, I just begun to get used to not having Bill in my life. I can't go back into all that again. I don't want to. And I told him so last night. Well, that does it. Thank you, darling. I, I've done my best to be on the level all through this Bill Needs thing. I didn't want to make a big pitch for myself while he was still tangled up with Kit. I've tried not to take advantage either of the fact that you were miserable and confused. Oh, I know it, Nick. I'd appreciate it. You've been wondering. There's a limit to how much a man can take, how long he can go on worrying about the other fella. Darling, I purposely waited for Bill to have this say to talk to you as a free person. But now... Darling, I, I just can't be noble any longer. Peggy, I, I love you. I love you like fire and stars and mountains. It's, it's a big love. It has even me scared. I know you don't feel the same way about me. You, you probably never would. Darling, I'm in no position to bargain. I, I've, I've reached the end of my endurance. Peggy, I, I feel very humble. If you'll marry me, no matter what happens, I'll accept you on your own terms. I, I won't burden you with my emotions. And I'll be willing to accept whatever crumbs happen my way, with no complaints and no questions asked. What do you think, darling? Are you willing to give it a try? You can have all the good things we used to talk about, darling. The companionship and the laughter. You can be so peaceful, too. Yes, I think we could. Once, some time ago, you were willing to go ahead to, to get married right away. Peggy, I'm, I'm going to take you up on that now. Will you marry me, darling? Yes, Nicholas. Yes, I will. Nicholas Dorn took Peggy in his arms, then kissed her mouth tenderly, ardently. And yet, as he stood within his embrace, cool and somehow detached, Peggy's thoughts went back again to the memory of when Bill had first kissed her. And for a moment, the world had blotted out.